Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who is wondering if her new relationship is real or a rebound. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. Absolutely not. Not even close. We are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit as a supplement to your regular therapy or other uh, professional mental health resources. We are just here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right, I'm going to dive into today's letter. The letter is written to us from, I'm basically Cher singing the lyrics to Believe, (laughs) which is one of the best uh, names I've seen submitted in a minute, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing to us from Not Grief Counseling. Hi, thank you both for the impact your podcast has had on my life. While I could write a lengthy paragraph expressing my appreciation, I'll dive straight into the reason I'm reaching out. About seven months ago, my ex-partner of a decade tragically passed away. To make a complex story short, we had ended our engagement about seven months prior to his untimely accident. The aftermath of our separation was far from ideal. We stayed heavily involved but maintained a facade, concealing our true status from friends and family. We evaded therapy, reluctant to confront the harsh reality that our toxic dynamic would never change. During those months of physical separation, however, I embarked on a journey of self-discovery and healing, finding peace in understanding the root of his hurtful and self-destructive behavior. I am in grief counseling and I find myself in a relatively positive place in my grieving process. I took on a shocking amount of responsibility following his death due to the disconnect between my ex and his family. And after I was able to breathe a bit, I came to the realization that his passing, despite how deeply I loved him, has given me the first taste of freedom I've had in over 10 years. In the words of my therapist, while most people's lives become more complicated after the loss of a loved one, mine unexpectedly simplified. It's possible that I feel further in my grieving journey because of the separation. I already had to grieve him in a way, or maybe I feel more at peace than one would expect at this point because I know deeply and truly that I was the closest person to him on the planet. Even though he hurt me countless times, I feel lucky to have gotten to be his person. Anyway, despite my initial reluctance to dive into the realm of dating, a chance encounter four months after my ex's passing put me face to face with someone who has made a huge impact on my life. I haven't felt the dopamine rush of intense connection since my ex. This new person possesses qualities that challenge and heal the misconceptions I've formed about men due to my past relationships. If I had a hit list of qualities I've promised myself to look for in my next partner, he hits all of them. It feels surreal. So I guess my question is, how can I know whether the emotions I'm feeling for this new person are genuine or just a displacement of the intense feelings I had for my ex? I'm embarrassed to admit that at times I've felt as though my ex somehow orchestrated the encounter. This new person has said things to me that are unbelievable, like offering the exact puzzle pieces my ex knew were missing from the jumbled up box that was our relationship. I'm happy with the no pressure situation the new person and I have now, but the intensity has made me start to feel like I don't want to lose him. How can I know if this is real or just a rebound? Thank you both for your incredible talent of guidance. You offer lessons in a language we are so lucky to have access to. Oh, Mm. I love that. I love that too. All right, Cher, thank you for asking us this question. Um, First of all, I want to say that I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I know that this was a complicated person in your life um, at when he passed. And also he was an important person in your life. Uh, and that comes with its own brand of 
grieving and sorrow and anger and all of those things. Um, and I'm sorry that you were in such a toxic relationship with this person and that the end of your relationship seems like it was also pretty toxic um, with needing to conceal what was happening um, and not knowing that you have the tools to figure out how to extricate yourselves from each other in a way that felt helpful or healing. Um, you know, uh, I talk about grief a lot on this podcast um, as somebody who has experienced um, some grief in my life. And what I have come to know about grief is that it looks different from for everyone, that it is not a linear process, but instead just like a jumbled mass that we're always kind of juggling with us wherever we go. And, you know, looking at the story of your experience of processing through what was going on with your ex, his passing, and then moving into this new relationship slash whatever you would like to call this uh, thing that you're embarking on with this new person, that the timeline of it um, isn't weird or surprising to me because people are so capable of feeling and moving through all sorts of different things in different ways. Um, so I just want to like say that up front because I know that probably some of our listeners are going to hear four months after her partner, her ex died, she's with someone else. And I don't think that that's weird at all. <laughs> I think that people are really capable of processing through things while they're happening. Uh, and that if grief is nonlinear, then it also doesn't have a timeline. So I just want to name that out front and say that, um, that Sierra and I are really, um, proud of you for the work that you've done. Uh, and we're really interested in helping you figure out what you want to do with this new set of things that are happening in your life. But before we be, get into that, uh, we're going to take a short break. All right. Welcome back, my darlings. And to our letter writer, thank you again for trusting us with this letter. Just echoing some of Sam's sentiments, like I think it was very brave of you to articulate the sense of freedom that you're feeling. And also, I think it's a very universal experience, even though it might seem antithetical to like the more prominent narratives that are shared about grief in in popular media and stuff. A sense of freedom that comes with death and grief and loss is from my understanding and my experience of it, very common and added, added to that, the sense, uh, a little bit of like human nuance, um, and, and tenderness, you know, people are so fucking complicated and we have such capacity to, I don't know, I don't know, hurt each other and like get tangled up in each other. And, um, I remember talking to you once, Sam, about a relationship with one of my elders in my life and and being like, I, I know I'm going to be able to process this person a lot more clearer and simply after they pass because I will no longer be required to participate in that relationship under the rules that they have established. Do you know what I mean? Like, um... Not that I was longing for that person to be out of my life, but that I already saw the, 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 the sense of freedom that the letter writer is describing that I may be able to access in this very difficult, very nuanced and complicated relationship of mine. So just echoing this, what Sam said, this makes a lot of sense to me and I am sorry for your loss and I am happy for your freedom at the same time. Those, those feelings can exist at the same time. And as like a, like a, a faux spiritual person <laughs> or like, I don't know what I am, but I like, I, I don't have any concrete spiritual thoughts, but I like to explore them. I, I like the idea, you know, whether it's real or not that like this, that your partner in whatever state they're in um, ushered this other person into your life because as a gift to you. And I think often like things in grief and in spirituality, they're just metaphors. They're just a way for us to say things or paint things that make things feel, make our real feelings feel validated 
by some sort of higher power or whatever. And so, so whether or not this is real, whether or not it means anything to you, the symbolism there is real. This person is real. This person, the feelings that you're experiencing are real. They don't, of course, they are always going to be in context, like in, there's always going to be a call and response to our emotions when we go through trauma like this, but also, you know, so, so your partner sent this perfect gift to you, um, upon their passing or, or maybe they didn't, but does it make it any less perfect in this moment? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think one of the ways that lots of us process through our grief is by, by ascribing the things in our lives to the people that have passed. And I, and I think that's beautiful and wonderful. And like, I do it all the time. Um, and I, I think that it's, you know, having gone through all of the things that you have gone through searching for this type of, of like closure, I think is really beautiful and, and wonderful. Um, you know, and I also want to say that like, you know, despite the fact that it may feel like your partner has, has, or your ex has brought this new person into your life. We also want to make sure that like in the world that you are living in, that this like person is the right person for you. And, you know, we have a lot of narratives also about rebounds, right? Like we have this idea that grief is a long-term process that should take a long time and should be linear. And we also have this idea that like breakups should also be linear and take a certain amount of time. And that if we start dating someone soon after, it's just a rebound in it and it isn't actually real. Um, and I think that this question that you're asking yourself of like, you know, do I have feelings for this person or am I just kind of responding to everything that I've been through over the course of the past few months is an important one to be unpacking for yourself and be unpacking with a therapist, right? Because that's an, I think that's a good question to be asking. And I also want to make the case for the idea that our ability to find new people after we've had a breakup or after we've gone through some sort of really traumatic or bad experience isn't defined by time and instead is defined by whether or not we're in a place where we can be in authentic relationship with people. And it sounds like you're feeling like you're in that place. And I think that that's really wonderful and good. And even the fact that you're kind of asking yourself this question around like, is this you know, real or is this like displaced feelings from other stuff that's going on indicates to me that like you're in a place where you're already thinking these questions and I don't know that we'll ever get clear answers to them, but I think the important part here is to like dig into some of that and continue to try and practice some awareness of the patterns that we're falling into with people so we can decide if they're working for us or not. You know, like you talk in your letter about like, it feels like this person like is the missing puzzle piece of, of, the puzzle that was happening in our relationship, right? Like they, they have every piece that wasn't there. And I think that that's probably true of lots of us when we get out of bad relationships is that we kind of seek out somebody who has like the opposite characteristics of the person we were dating, or they have the things that were missing in our relationship. So it's like, oh, my relationship had no sex in it. And now this person and I have like crazy awesome sex. And like, that's exactly what I wanted. Or like, oh, this relationship was so unfulfilling because they like never did anything fun with me. And now I'm finding this person who's like so much fun. We go out to concert, right? Like that happens. And I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. I think the issue with it is when we're only looking at those puzzle pieces and saying, look how these fit so well in the places where I was unfulfilled before, as opposed to looking at the whole puzzle that is that person, right? To look at them and say, yeah, absolutely, they're super fun and we go out every night. And I can't really call them if something bad is happening because they're like not they're not there for me. Or yeah, we have crazy awesome sex and it's super great, but they actually treat me really poorly like when we're out in public and like that doesn't work super well for me. What can happen, I think, when we're in kind of this rebound phase or whatever it might be, is that we like seek out those puzzle pieces to fit. And then that's the only thing we pay attention to. And we kind of lose sight of like the whole person. I don't know that that's happening here, right? Like I'm not in your body and I'm not in your relationship, so I don't actually know. And it sounds like you also just kind of really like this person, right? Like you're looking at some of these puzzle pieces and you're thankful that they're there. And it sounds like you might be looking at all of the other pieces of it too, and saying like, this kind of works as well. And that's what I would encourage you to do as you're thinking about like, 
what does it look like to, to decide whether or not this person is real or a rebound is to look at them fully and see how well they integrate into your understanding of yourself, into your understanding of what you want your life to be. And make sure that you're not just focusing on the ways that they were different from your ex or the ways that they're providing you something that your ex wasn't providing you. Yeah. I thought that's beautiful, Sam. Um, you know, in the, to quote Frozen 2, you are the one you've been waiting for. <laughs> uh huh. Frozen 2, much better um, than Frozen 1. We've already talked about it. So much better. Uh, but uh, jokes aside, you know, I look at your questions and I, I, I'm trying to read in between the lines about what you've told us about this past relationship, you know, and I just want to tell you, um, this might not be right at all, but you are allowed to listen to your inner intuition to, to, you can give yourself permission not to second guess what feels good. Um, maybe your, sense of self is sort of budding right now because it was in an, you know, an unfertile, unhealthy environment for so long. And, and, and I really think the time now for you is to, is to nurture this sense of self is to nurture this freedom, to nurture the, the voice that you're finally allowing yourself to listen to and speak with. And if that voice says, I want to follow this bliss, I want to follow this love, then I think that's a really great opportunity to, to, to grow yourself within that, the, the context of this relationship. And also in like zooming out of this, just one person, this is a time, as you've said, of, of, great self-discovery and healing. And, and part of that might be practicing finding the edges of your autonomy, you know, finding the edges of, of trusting yourself. Like, what does it feel like to say, I'm going to trust my intuition and follow it into this new love because I know what's right for me. I might have been told by someone else what was right for me for so many years. And now I get to discern that myself. Um, yeah, I think I'm really interested in, in to, I mean, really interested in knowing what feels good to you. What feels good to you? Um, I trust you, Sam trust you. And we also trust your grief process that like, it's not going to be clean always. It's not going to look like what everyone else's grief will look like. Um, but we trust you to figure it out, to make decisions, to, to correct those decisions. You know, like even if you, you seek this new love and it turns out to not be that perfect puzzle piece, you didn't make a mistake. You were just following those feelings, following that intuition. Um, and, and that's what, that's what healing is all about is really allowing yourself to make mistakes, Inter you know, processing through them, forgiving yourself, moving forward anyway, um, you're doing all the right things. And Sam and I see no big red flags in this relationship. And also we want you to focus on yourself first, you know, and you can do those in tandem. You can do those in tandem. Um, I just... The frozen quote is real. Like you are the one that you're looking for, not this puzzle piece of a person. You are the person who gets to set up the dynamic in this new relationship, this new dynamic in your life um, to explore this new freedom. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Um, long story short, Sierra and I are wishing you all the best. Um, we're proud of you for what you've accomplished in sort of moving through this process. Um, and we also know that like all of us, there's still work for you to do. And we're excited to be in relationship and in partnership with you in doing that continuous work that all of us are always embarking on. So thank you for writing. We hope that this helps. We love you. All right, it's Friday, so we're going to give you a blind date every week. We like to set you up with something that we love uh, and something we want you to experience. So this week, our blind date is... It's an episode of a podcast. Uh, this blind date is actually from Peter. I have not listened to this episode, but he was like, you should you should talk about this on the podcast, which is cute. Uh, it's an episode of It's Been a Minute. 
um, which is a great show hosted by Brittany Luce. Um, and it's the January 5th, episode 6, 692, looking ahead to the 2024 election, plus getting sober curious for dry January. And you can skip the 2024 election thing because like, oh, Lord knows we don't need to be talking about that anymore. Um, <laughs> but the conversation about um, dry January, uh, Peter said was really interesting. I know there's been like 12,000 think pieces about dry January and like what it means and whether or not it's healthy or whatever. But what's interesting about this one is that um, Brittany talks with Anna Marine Cox, who is a uh, writer and journalist and who is also an alcoholic who is, you know, choosing sobriety every day um, and talking about her experience of watching, you know, lots of people around her make the choice to be sober for a period of time and like what, it, how the impact that that has had on her and sort of her understanding of like what alcoholism is. And, and it was just like, according to him, it was just like a very interesting conversation about sobriety, about what it means, about like how we can practice sobriety in a way that is like respectful of people who need sobriety in order to function. And it, it, it sounds like it was just like a very interesting and nuanced conversation about dry January and people's sort of like increased interest in practicing more sobriety in their lives. So uh, check it out. It's the January 5th episode of It's Been a Minute, um, the one about the 2024 election plus getting sober curious for dry January. If you would like more content from us and you would like to join us for our office hours, you can always support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode as well as access to our office hours, which is when Sierra and I hop on Zoom for an hour a month and just chat with people who have questions or just want to talk to us. That's patreon.com slash justbreakuppod. Our next office hours is happening next week on January 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about your questions about all matters, <laughs> <laughs> all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcasts and his music. And remember, I think that this podcast is obviously about relationships. It's about breakups. It's about connections. And the root of that is always the self, unfortunately. It's always going to come back to how are you nurturing and honoring and holding your own self accountable? How are you celebrating yourself? How are you holding boundaries for yourself? How are you respecting yourself? How are you soothing yourself? Maybe 2024 can be the year of the self within romantic, personal work, friendship, relationships. We can make space for all of it. And we can always be strengthening our relationship to ourselves. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs>